Other than humans, the great apes include the chimpanzee, bonobo, gorilla, and orangutan. They are tailless primates that range in size from the smallest bonobo at 30 kilograms or 66 pounds to the largest eastern gorilla at 180 kilograms or 400 pounds. Through evolution, they lost the use of their tails as they spent more time on the ground and less time in the trees. Whilst having a tail in the treetops is beneficial for grabbing onto branches, it is less important on the ground. Today's great apes predominantly live in Africa, except for orangutans which inhabit parts of Asia. Our closest living relatives are the chimpanzees and bonobos, with which we share 98.7% of our DNA. Whilst humans live throughout Europe, the other great apes do not. But why is this? Here, we take a look. Firstly, if we look back at the evolution of the great apes, we can begin to understand where they came from and which parts of the world they once inhabited. 22 million years ago, during the early Miocene, tree-adapted primates were widespread across East Africa. They were the ancestors of today's great apes, but at this time, there was no evidence of them further north than Africa during that period. Fast forward to the middle Miocene, and scientists have found fossils from non-monkey primates in the Mediterranean basin, and therefore Europe. This uncovered the path that our earliest ancestors may have taken. It is understood that these primates radiated from Africa around 12 million years ago. Fossils were from potential ancestors of the great apes, known as Pierolopithecus, Hispanopithecus, and Dryopithecus. The climates north of the African continent was warmer and more humid back then, providing a suitable climate for our earliest ancestors. As well as this, the Mediterranean Sea contracted several times, allowing animals like the great apes to migrate into Europe from Africa. Their fossils have been found in France, Spain, and Austria. So, if extinct ancestral great apes did once live further north, what happened to them, and why don't they live in Europe nowadays? The reason appears to be largely to do with climate and the subsequent change in habitat and diet across Europe. Following the Miocene, the climate of the Pliocene became cooler and drier as well as more seasonal. These conditions weren't favorable for the great apes and their specialized diets, so they became few and far between. To try and understand why the great apes didn't survive in Europe, scientists had to understand the niches that they inhabited. They were able to do this by identifying what food some of the prehistoric apes in Europe ate by studying the dental wear and tear on their fossilized teeth. While Pierolopithecus ate hard foods such as tree nuts or seeds, Hispanopithecus preferred softer fruits. These differences between diets depended on the geographical location of each of the great apes, and it meant that the different species developed behavior to take advantage of these varying food sources. Species of apes from the Catalan region fed mainly on trees, similar to today's orangutans, and species from Eastern Europe spent more time foraging on the floor. This reduced competition between the great apes, which, when the climate was stable, benefited them and allowed each to thrive in their own habitat. Each was adapted to its own specific niche and was able to take advantage of the food on offer. Whilst the specialized diets of the great apes were once a contributing factor to their success, when the climate changed and seasons were more prominent, this spelled disaster. Now, the vegetation upon which the great apes relied became fragmented. This resulted in food sources drying up and the great apes struggling to survive in Europe. Unlike some of the more adaptable species on the planet, it seems the great apes weren't able to make long-term changes to their diet. And so, with each of the diverse groups of great apes unable to adapt to different diets, they became extinct. In Central and Western Europe, the great apes became extinct between 12 and 9 million years ago, while species from Eastern Europe disappeared 7 million years ago. But those in Africa and parts of Asia thrived. Some apes that had made the perilous journey into Europe managed to migrate to Asia between 9 and 17 million years ago. These were the apes from the genus Dryopithecus and also the genus Sivapithecus. Three species of Sivapithecus lived in the Asian rainforests. These were around 1.5 meters tall, 
and had many physical attributes resembling those of a chimpanzee. However, their facial features were much more like the orangutans, taking on a more concave structure. They spent their time between moving both on the ground and in the trees, and fed on a diet of savanna grasses and seeds. It is now believed that Sivapithecus was a direct ancestor of today's orangutans. While orangutans and their ancestors once inhabited a broad geographical range in Asia, ranging from Southeast Asia to China during the Pleistocene, they are now restricted to just a few small islands, namely Borneo and Sumatra. They made the journey to these islands when the sea levels during the Pleistocene were much lower and islands were joined to the mainland via spits of land. When the sea levels rose again, the populations of orangutans became isolated on these islands. Those on mainland Asia were outcompeted and died out, whilst those on the islands largely avoided similar competition and still survive to this day. So why weren't there any more migrations of the great apes out of Africa? Once the Sahara Desert formed across the north of Africa, it acted as a physical barrier for many species, preventing both the migration into and out of Africa. There is some debate about when this desert formed. Many scientists believe it was established two to three million years ago, during the time that spanned from the late Pliocene to the early Pleistocene epoch. However, the discovery of seven million year old dune deposits throughout northern Chad suggests it may be older, having formed during the Miocene epoch 23 million to 5.3 million years ago. So, they used to be great apes in Europe, but sadly, they no longer exist there. The changes in climate, habitats, and food sources all contributed to their demise there. But could they survive in Europe if they managed to cross the Sahara and migrate once more? There may be plenty of space for some of the great apes in Europe, but their habitat and diet may not be suitable. 86% of Africa's mountain gorilla's diet is made up of 142 plant species. They eat leaves, shoots, and stems off plants. 7% of their diet is composed of edible roots, 3% flowers, and 2% fruits, whilst occasionally eating insects. They survive in high mountainous regions amongst lush vegetation, most of which is not found in Europe. However, species like the chimpanzee, which have a much more diverse and varied diet, could perhaps survive in some of the wild areas of Europe. With climate change and a potentially warmer environment in more northerly regions, we may begin to see some animals that are typically found closer to the equator in places like Europe. As it is, Barbary macaques, also known as Barbary apes, are the only species of primate found in Europe. Although these old-world monkeys mostly inhabit Algeria, Tunisia, and Morocco in northern Africa, they are also found on Europe's Iberian Peninsula in Gibraltar. With sea levels set to rise with climate warming, it is unlikely that the Mediterranean will contract as it did before, allowing the movement of animals from Africa to Europe. Furthermore, it is also unlikely that migrations of this magnitude would be possible in today's industrial world where man has impacted so much of the natural landscape. However, in other parts of the world, migrations like this are taking place. Most notably, the North American coyote is on the brink of crossing the Darien Gap into South America, and their Southern American counterpart, the crab-eating fox, is heading northwards into Central and Northern America. Could we soon see some North African species making their way into Europe? as the climate begins to shift and change as it has done so many times over the Earth's history. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.